Good afternoon. My name is Jaime Gutierrez, uh, CEO and co-founder of Loop. So when Jorge invited me to, to present about Loop, he told me, oh, it's a 15-minute presentation. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. I've never actually presented in front of anyone in my life. So I was like, 15 minutes, how am I going to do that? So yeah, nice first presentation, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. So a lot of people come in, um, I don't want to sell you Loop for 15 minutes straight. I'd rather talk about uh, like the backstory of how Loop started and, and because everyone just sees the product that actually people use and everything, but no, nobody actually sees like how, how everything started from the beginning to, to where we are now. So I'd rather go that route. So I would start with uh, about a year and a half ago, I was uh, thinking of, uh, of the idea for Loop. Um, and I started learning uh, coding, trying to do it myself. I learned that uh, trying to do a mobile screen recorder is extremely difficult for somebody that doesn't know how to code. But I still kept trying and trying. For a while, um, I would say probably like three or four months, I tried to, to, to code. I didn't. So a couple of weeks later, uh, I was at a bar, because obviously all good stories start at a bar. Uh, and I bumped into an old friend that I hadn't seen like seven, seven years. And we started uh, talking, catching up and stuff. And then he told me like, oh, well, actually I have a software development company. And I was like, oh, okay, so you do like apps and stuff. He was like, yeah, I do apps too. And um, he told me, and after that, I mean, I didn't think any of it. I've, afterwards, I knew it was destiny. But at the moment, I was like, whatever. So I still kept trying to do the app by myself. Later, after so much stress, my girlfriend told me, why don't you just go with this guy that, that does apps? And I was like, you know what? Why didn't I think of that? So I called him up, and I'm like, hey, so I have this pretty awesome idea that I think uh, we could do something with it. And he's like, oh, yeah, so let's set up a meeting in a couple of days. So we set up the meeting. Um, he calls me like an hour before the meeting, and he's like, so can you elaborate a little bit on, the, on, the, on, on your app or whatever you want to do? I'm like, well, I do, but I'd, I'd rather tell you in person because I, I don't know how to explain it in, in, like, on the phone. And he's like, okay, just tell me one thing. And I'm like, what? Are you trying to build the next Facebook? And I'm like, no, why? He's like, you know, you don't know how many people come and they're like, yeah, I'm building the next Facebook, but it's not Facebook. And I'm like, okay, well, no, it's not that. So we go to the meeting. Uh, it was a corner bakery where we were having lunch. And so I explained in detail that I wanted an app that is able to record your screen and your audio simultaneously. So I always use like the most basic examples of why it came up with that. So your parents call you on the phone and they're like, oh, how do you use the app? How do you do this on the phone? How do you upload a picture on Facebook? And after explaining for the seventh or eighth time, they're like, you know what, come and show me how to do it. So I was like, well, why don't we just make a multi-million dollar app that you don't have to talk to your parents anymore? <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much how the idea came to be. Obviously, that was just the beginning. So we started talking about, uh, with the, the developers and everything, we started talking like, you know, we could do website reviews, app reviews, blogging, gaming. Uh, you could record Snapchats and nobody would ever notice. Stif stuff like that. I mean, this was pretty much, anyone could have a different use for it. So from there, I mean, we, it wasn't even an app anymore. It was like a, more of a tool with, that people would be using. So pretty much the deal was done. Uh, yeah, so we decided let's move forward with it. After a while, I was like, if I want this to be successful, I need like co-founders to help me out, like financially wise and everything. So everyone wanted to help, but nobody actually wanted to put money. They just wanted me to give them percent of the company for them helping. I was like, I mean, uh, I don't know. So after a while, I found two co-founders that were willing to back me up. After I explained how Loop is a screen recording, audio recording. They started uh, giving me ideas that, you know what, why don't we make an actual network within something like YouTube, but you have like a private section for the videos that only you want to see, and like a public section that maybe the world wants to see. So we use that example of like an online shopper. So uh, like there's a lot of bloggers that are, you know, shopping. Everyone has a different style. So imagine just seeing everyone's different style so you learn more from every other person. So at that moment, I knew they were going to be my co-founders. So we started development in May of uh, last year. Uh, we did a, a lot of work. Uh, about a month afterwards, 
um, they gave me a prototype, which the only thing it would do was uh, record it. And we were pretty excited, and we were happy, and we were all talking and while recording, and you could see the smiles on everyone's faces and having a really good reaction. So we were like, why don't you just add a camera so you could see while you're recording a video or while you're online shopping or anything like that and see the person's reaction to what they're doing. And we were like, well, OK, yeah, we should just add that also. We started development on that. So after the time, I thought it was time for the world to, to know what Loop was. So we signed up for a TechCrunch meetup in Austin. And they told us, like, yeah, if somebody drops out, uh, you would be next in line. <laughs> yeah, obviously, nobody's going to drop out of TechCrunch. This was the first time the Loop screen recorder was spoken out outside of like, our founders and developers. All the feedback that we got was super incredible. Everyone was like, wow, uh, I mean, you could do so many things with it. Why hasn't anyone built it before? Things like that. And we were like, OK, maybe we should start looking for investors. So I was like, ah, who wouldn't want to invest in this? I don't know if you, anyone's that ever looked for an investment from a VC. It's one of the hardest possible things you could possibly imagine. I wrote and rewrote and wrote it 150 times a day. Uh, I mean, it was incredible. My pitch deck, my business plan, I would rewrite it, rewrite it, rewrite it. I would spend hours a day trying to perfect it, only to get like, emails back like, yeah, that's a really cool idea, but I, we're not interested. Or like, OK, yeah, you're like on the right path. Contact us when you have a first investment. I'm like, why would I contact you if I, I already have an investment? So others wouldn't even answer. It was really hard being turned down so many times. But we, we kept going. I mean, the development team saw me like kind of depressed. And they were like, well, why don't you just uh, like start like competing in uh, like small competitions here in Texas or stuff like that? And I'm like, OK, you know, maybe get some confidence back. I wanted to give up, literally. But then I was like, ah, why would we want to apply to small, low-level competitions, things like that? Go big or go home, right? So instead, I go apply to one of the top five conf startup conferences in the world. Again. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I don't know if anyone's heard of the Next Web. It's a pretty big website. So they have this competition, the Next Web Boost. Uh, startup competition. The thing that they have is that they only accept companies that have a minimal viable product, something that you could actually show, work with, things like that. So I told my developers, hey, I have an interview next week. And they're like, what? Yeah, and we need a minimal viable product. No, we can't do that. I'm like, well, I need it, so how are we going to do it? And they're like, well, I mean, we tried our best, but we didn't. And I was pretty stressed. So. I have my meeting. Uh, I'm waiting uh, on a Tuesday. It was like 7 in the morning. So I'm waiting for the, the Skype call from, from the next web. I'm like, what am I going to do? I mean, they're, ask, they're asking for, for a presentation of my app. So I'm like, uh, let's see what I can do. So I explain how we do screen recording and audio. Now we're both cameras and built-in sharing capability to any social media we, and our own. My interview lasted less than five minutes. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> usually like they're 20 minutes. That's what they told me. And I was like, OK, well, I messed up. I probably let everyone down in my team. I probably have to close loop and stuff like that. But I mean, they told me like, yeah, we'll contact you in about a week or two. And I was like, yeah, I'm already expecting it. Loop is a great company. We're very impressed. No, I'm sorry, you're not invited. Something like that. So I woke up Thursday at 4.30 in the morning to an email that said, oh, we only accept 100 out of thousands of applications. Congratulations, you've been actually accepted into the next web competition in November in New York. And I was like, whoa, I couldn't sleep ever again after that. <laughs> so after that, I was like, you know what? Let me just start applying to every single competition in the world. So I applied to South by Southwest in Austin Web Summit in uh, Collision in New Orleans, the next web in Amsterdam, and got accepted into all three of them. Then we're also applying to TechCrunch Disrupt uh, Pitch like the competition, because we're already accepted for the booth, but I want to like present in front of people in September. And I'm sure we will be accepted into that also. So leading up into the, in, to the next web um, around October, we had a competition of that, uh, the top 24 startups from there would speak in front of about 1,500 speakers. Obviously, you know I'm not the best speaker in the world. 
And I was pretty nervous because we were in 20th position, which is like you would present, right? And then I guess all the stress caught up to me or I don't know what happened, but one day I just woke up and I couldn't stand up anymore. And my parents had to take me to the doctor because my muscles were so sore from the stress that I couldn't move. Well, yeah, it was pretty bad. He gave me pills, made him feel better. So guess, I, guess that turns out Loop got 26 place. We didn't even present. So yeah, stress for nothing, right? But I mean, we were still with the booth and everything. So we arrived in New York City in November. We were, I mean, we walk in, there's like virtual reality startups, legal startups, cybersecurity, hardware, 90% of them all being funded. They, they had already been funded. And we had zero amount of funding. So we, we talked to some potential investors, things like that. Then I remember this really rude investor comes up directly to us and like he starts telling us off pretty much. He has to explain what Loop was and like I'm like, oh, it's Loop, Loop's a screen recorder. What, do you think I'm stupid or what? I can read. And I'm like, well, okay, then why do you ask? And he's like, then I try to like, oh, what's different about it? Well, it, it uploads directly to the cloud. Tell me something I don't know. And I'm like, what? So even the guys next to us in the booth, they're like looking at us like, what's wrong with this guy? So he, he walks away, he comes back, he's like, your website doesn't even work. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, the, the, the app should be able to download once I get into the website. I'm like, we're in beta testing, we're not, we, we, you're, not, you're not gonna be able to download it from the website. I don't wanna be able to invest in a company that can't even download a, a, an app. And I'm like, well, I, don't, I wouldn't want you to invest in my company. So he walked out pissed off, screaming bad words and stuff. And I was like, okay, whatever. So in comes an investor that, um, that I had pretty much been waiting for. He starts talking about himself and what he does. Turns out this guy has a pretty big company that does PC and Mac screen recording. Pretty much what we do, but only on computers. He's never been able to do it on phones. This guy has 31 million downloads at $10 a piece. Do the math, that's around $300 million company. He shows us this app that he's been trying to do. He tells us, oh, I've been doing this for two and a half years. And I tell him, joking around, we've been doing this for seven months and we're farther along than you. And he was kind of like, okay, he laughed. And then he told us uh, what pretty much every startup wants to hear. I want to buy you guys out. And we're like, oh, okay, we weren't expecting that coming here when we don't even have like users or anything like that. So he's like, oh, I want to invite you guys to the next wave after party. Uh, if you want to join me at my table, because all the investors would have a table at, their, at the after party. So we're, we're, we're driving on, on Uber all, uh, to like the party, right? So my co-founders are like, dude, if he offers you like 100,000, take it, whatever, it doesn't matter. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I've never had that much amount of money in my life. <laughs> so we get there. And we're all talking, getting, meeting, you know, just talking about our lives and stuff, getting to know each other. And he's like, hey, let's take, get straight to business. He offers me $500,000 for the company. And I'm like, oh, let me talk to my co-founders. <laughs> and I'm like, what do we do? Why are we talking? Let's just take the money. <laughs> That's what they tell me. So I'm like, thinking, 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 okay. I go back to the, to, the, to the investor. I tell him I want 250,000 for 30%. Take it or leave it. <laughs> After arguing for my, with my co-founders for weeks for not taking the deal, I would literally, they would literally hate me. They would fight with me every single day. They call me like, are you stupid? He didn't take the investment. He only wanted to buy us out to take us out of the market. So we literally got in a fight. I mean, they're my best friends, but they, we did get in a fight. They were pretty pissed off. Not because of their money, but because more of the time I put into it. So I keep looking for, for investors, right? Um, it's already December. I'm looking for more local, like Texas area investors. So probably on, um, on December 24th, Christmas Eve, I probably presented like uh, the 100 different pitch deck I have made and tell them how Loop is the ultimate screen recording application on mobile, screen recording, audio recording, camera recording, tracking your finger movement, cloud-based saving, sharing instantly to a phone, tablet, or PC. He stood up after the meeting, told me that he wanted to be part, and verbally committed 
some money. After about six to seven weeks of money, of uh, talking, <laughs> and you know, possible buyouts, who, who would be able to buy us out, things like that, we're proud to announce that we just received our first check yesterday. So yeah, we'll be launching in South by Southwest two weeks from now. Oh, I have a... I'll show you a little example of what Loop is. Oh, well, it doesn't have sound. Oh, it does. <laughs> well, I mean, I can barely hear my voice and stuff. So. Nope. This is a video of Luke. OK, well. My voice is really bad. Get an edge so I'll just explain it here. So this is like the tracker. That's pretty much the, your control system that, that you use. The first button like, uh, hides everything. The second button is the start, stop record, uh, recording. The third button is a mute button. And the fourth button is the turn on the camera. That's me. So you could pretty much have it anywhere in the corners. We don't want you having it in the middle because that's pretty much going to bother your view. So I pretty much make this video using Airbnb because since we're going to New Orleans in, uh, in April, this would be something like a video that I would show to my co-founders. Like, hey, I really found this good place pretty near our, our location that we're supposed to be presenting at. So pretty much uh, they're in New Orleans. I show them all the houses that are there. Instead of having to tell them, like, dude, go into Airbnb and uh, Check this one out, stuff like that. You just show them a video and be like, oh, yeah, I like it. Let's take it, something like that. As you know, pretty much like you're reviewing a website, things like that. <coughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. And whenever you want to stop recording, you know, it stops. You just click on the little button. Yep. That's it. <laughs> so we have a Q&A session. Jaime, I hope you're ready. Uh, no, nah, only after probably March 15. It's on Android right now, only though. What do you do in the I'm the CEO. Business development. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, like innovation, I, I do a little bit of everything. But I mean, I do have people helping me, like in marketing and brand development. And obviously, I'm not good enough to be a development, but I do everything else and accounting, financial stuff. You mentioned other companies besides the network. You said other smaller ones that you after. I didn't apply to any of them. Okay. They sent me some links, but I didn't know any of them. I mean, they were like uh, in Gadget and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, Gadget is pretty big, but. <laughs> But I didn't. I, they passed me like. There's like this venture in mission that they do a little competition. I, I forgot this name. Ruby yeah, that one. They passed me the link for that one. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>